Brother Joe is going to come and lead us in prayer for the message. Good morning, church. If you could bow your head. Thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful day that you've blessed us with. Thank you for allowing us all to make it here today with our friends and our family, allowing us to be in your presence. Please ask that you bless us today on this Sunday as Brother Jesse has given the message, that you bless his heart, his mind, and that you bless the congregation and us as well, that we listen and open our hearts for this message, that we spread this message with those that we love, and that we use it to connect with one each other. Please ask that you bless us to take everything that we've learned today, to reproduce it, and that everything that you've taught us today will take to the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name, the prayer of thanksgiving, amen. The harvest is ready, but are we? Am I? Theme for the month is Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Scripture thought for today is Luke 4, 32. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. Recap a little bit over this theme this month. Uh, Ken, Ken Evelino started us off with the wise and the foolish. He talked about the wise and the foolish. It takes wisdom to win souls. Our testimony is blessed are the peacemakers. If we are thankful, we, we will produce good fruit. He talked about a tree that was in a parking lot that nobody seemed to notice, and he went over and plucked some fruit, and he, it was so delicious. The love of God is really what wins souls. Amen. One time fishing was a way of life to survive. Now it's more of a recreation. That was Brother or, or Deacon Amon George. He talked about fish, fishermen, fishers of men. We are used by God to bring people to God. The two ways most people do that is evangelism by sharing the word of God and the testimony of what God has done for you. Shaq, you said that perfectly today. Our mom was preaching about that last week or a week before. It was a week before, two weeks ago. The anointing of God means the power and presence of God is in that person. The power, everybody say power. power. And the presence, the presence of God is in you. Pastor Andy Giebler talked last week about how souls matter. What a message. What a message. We must prepare ourselves to minister and serve others. Seek God and find his purpose or yoke for you, or you could end up taking on the wrong yoke for your life. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. Don't take someone else's yoke that belongs to them. The harvest is ready, are we? Mark chapter 4, verse 26 to 32. And he said, So is the kingdom of God as a man who had cast his seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, and his seed should spring up and grow. And he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth the fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, and then full of corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put in the sickle, because the harvest is come. And he said, we're until we should like the kingdom of God. What, what comparison should we compare it? It's like a grain of mustard seed which is sown in the earth. It is less than all the seeds of the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and become greater than all the herbs. And shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may even lodge under the saddle of it. Amen. If you're not sure what the fowls of the air are, it's the enemy. There's another parable, parable of the sower talks about how it comes and tries to take that they sit there waiting to try to take that seed as soon as it's planted try and snatch it up from people even the enemy sits under that well, kingdom of God well, well, well. Luke chapter chapter 9 verse 1 and he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power everybody say power, power. and authority. authority authority over all the devils to what cure diseases and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Two things. Just two things. Amen. Preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. That's the 12. And he said to them, take nothing for your journey, neither stabs nor scrip, neither bread nor money. Well, 
How would you like to be sent on a journey like that to a place you've never been before? Nothing to eat, not even money in your pocket. And whatsoever house you enter in there, there abide and thence depart. And whoever will not receive you, go out of that city and shake the very dust off your feet for a testimony against them. Well. And they departed and went into the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Luke chapter 10. The harvest is great, isn't it? Jesus is realizing I've got to send some more folks out. Another 70. And after these things, the Lord appointed another 70 also. 70 means two things when it's calculated. Two for perfect numbers. Seven mean perfection and ten being completeness of God's law. Wow. Also, Moses was given 70 to help bear the burden. And also those 70, God put the, the burden of the, of the preaching of the gospel and the prophecy on those 70 also. And people are even coming back and complaining at that time. These guys are prophets, and yet they're, they're not prophets, and yet they're prophesying. Who gave them the authority to do that? So you can have the gift of prophecy and not be a prophet. Well, and what is the gift of prophecy in Revelations? The testimony of Jesus Christ. Yes, the testimony, right, Shaq, of Jesus Christ. He, dead on the, he died and bled on that old rugged cross. That's the gift of prophecy. Nothing else is important to us. Whatever we got to go through, he is important. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. I should just give the mic back to Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> and he sent them two and two before his face into every city and place where they also, we himself should come. This is a little different than the 12. He's kind of sent the 12 all randomly, but he sent the 70 where he was going to go. He sent them up before him. To wherever he was going to be, two by two. That'd be 35, basically, 35 cities that he was going to come to. That's a lot of work, isn't it? Therefore, he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, and he should send forth laborers unto his harvest. Go your, day, go your ways, therefore, behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves not going to be easy. Carry near, neither purse nor script nor shoes. Salute no man by the way. Don't waste no time. If you got friends and relatives you want to visit, this ain't the time. I got some business for you to do. I got some work for you to do. And whenever house you enter, first say, peace be to this house. Peace be to this house. And if the son of peace be there, then your peace will rest upon it. If not, it shall turn unto you again. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking those things with such as they give. And the la for the laborer, everybody say the laborer, laborer, is worthy of his hire. How would you like to go and preach for food? <laughs> Wouldn't be easy to do nowadays. Pastor Lee, you worked for 40 years in that same company. And they gave you a good paycheck, right? Yes, sir. How would you like to be told to go out and just live off the gospel? <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be easy. But Jesus wanted to bring a point here. He said, you're going to rely totally on me. Amen. The power that I'm giving you Amen. and the charity of others that are hosting you. Well, the hospitality. My, my uncle, he did worked off oil rigs off Israel. And part of the time when he'd come in, the custom there for the, the Israelites, and still is to this day, if you knock on the house and say, what's for dinner? They got to invite you in and serve you dinner. That's where this, the background of this came from. They'll bring you in and serve you dinner. Now, if they don't receive what you have, Jesus said, you need to kick the very dust off your feet and get out, move it, get it out of that house. But don't go from house to house, he said. Well, well, don't waste your time. I want, I want you to go to a certain place, a certain time, and stay there and eat what's put before you and live off the gospel. Verse number eight. And say, well, Verse number seven, and in that same house from eating, eating and drinking, those things which they give for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. Go not from house to house. Don't go from church to church. Well, well. Stay where God wants you to be. Amen. Now, if God calls you to another church, I'm not going to stand in the way of that. But where God called you to eat and where God called you to serve, there serve. As long as the, peace, the son of peace is there, remain. 
And then if they don't receive you anymore, then go to where God's calling you. That wasn't part of my notes. In verse number eight, whatever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as set before you, and heal the sick that are therein, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. But whatever city you enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out to the streets of the same, and say, even the very dust of your city which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you, notwithstanding to be sure of this, that this the kingdom of God has still come nigh to you. The message hasn't changed. I don't care if people reject you. You still have a mission and a message to do. You still have a testimony to share. And wouldn't it be great if all of us, about 70 here, just went out and did that? Just shared our testimony, Brother Shaq. Live every day. Don't waste no time. Do what we have. Redeem the time because the days are evil. You know, you can waste some money and get the money back, but you can't waste time and get that back. If you, if you think you can, go to the bank account and draw out, some, draw out some time that you've saved. We all get the same amount of time, however long that is. Don't waste it on foolishness. The harvest is ready, church. Are we? And to 70, verse number 12, we turned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan and fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Everybody say all. Oh. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, rejoice in this not. Rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Sometimes we uh, take the gifts and put more importance on the gifts of God than the actual salvation, than the doctrine of God. Well, the gift, yeah, the, he's given us the word with power. Believe me, that's, that's what we are out to do. The, spirit, the gifts of the Spirit didn't die with the apostles. They're alive and well in the church today. I know that's right. We just lack faith sometimes. Well. What is greater, the creator or the creation? Worship God in spirit and truth. Lord, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough food to invite someone over. The Lord will provide. My wife uh, sent me a text. Hey, I'm on my way over. I'm bringing some people over. They don't have, they can't eat right now in the house. I'm like working on the message. I'm like, I'm important. I've got things to do. <laughs> but God rebuked me right there and said, you better get ready to receive these people in your house. Lord Jesus. And minister like you're supposed to because I didn't call you to preach. I called you to, sh to minister before you preach. <laughs> you got it backwards. <laughs> Whew. You don't think us preachers get it sometimes? We get the sword a lot longer before you do. All week, sometimes two weeks, right? Heavy dose, even while we're up here, too. Why do you think you told him not to go to house to house? He didn't want you to hop around. He wanted to stick to the mission. But also, there's, there's people out there that are went to do you harm. I send you forth as lambs among the wolves. That's why you don't cast your pearl before in swine. You don't waste your time with people who don't want to hear. Because some people have... A, a harmful intent. Remember the falls of the air are with, growing right along with this tree. They're right along there out there. Sometimes they even come into church. Oh, well, wow, the devil comes to church? Yeah, sometimes more faithful than me. Well, well, <laughs> I'm going to get back to the message. If you lost everything you had, everyone you knew, could you live alone and preach and stay alive? Those days might come. Prepare yourself. Are we ready for the harvest? The harvest is ready for us. Focus your prayers on the laborers like yourself. How do we not bring up other laborers? How do we not bring up the young Desharians, the young Daniels, the young... How do we not do that? We have to do that. But part of that is 
praying for more laborers, but we have to teach and mentor them too. We have to bring them up according to God's ways, not our own. <laughs> How do we make fishermen? Teach them to fish. Right, Brother Armand? NFL teams great, build great dynasties, and they have great coaches like the Patriots. But you go in that locker room today and say, aren't you happy? You guys won so many Super Bowls. You're not going to get a good response because they can't keep rejoicing off what they did in the past. They have to do something today. <laughs> they have to put in the work today to win that championship. And so must we. we got to put in the work today. we got to labor today while Jesus said the night comes when no one can work. you got to work today. So while you're sitting around flipping through them channels, stop and listen to the Holy Ghost and say, Lord, where do I need to work today? What do I need to do? I'm tired. I've been walking all day. My job. I'm exhausted. That's the time that God wants to use you. Because Paul said, when I'm weak, then am I strong that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Well, they that wait upon the Lord. Amen. Said when we get older, we get a little wiser, don't we? <laughs> we don't just go out there headlong and, and mess ourselves up anymore. When we were younger. We got a little wisdom now. But he to win his souls is wise. So what if somebody that's new and converted, what are they to do? Oh, I double up my notes here. That's why. There we go. Excuse my moment. Second Timothy chapter 2, 15 to 26. First word of there is study. Everybody say study. The sow thyself approved unto God a workman, which is also a laborer or a teacher by definition. Need it not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, for there will increase more unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth the canker, whom is I forget these two names, I can't pronounce them, but you can read them later. Who concerning the truth has erred, saying the resurrection is past already. So somebody was out there saying that the resurrection of the church is past already. To overthrowing the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Amen. Having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Everybody say, depart from iniquity. But in great house there is not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. And if a man purge these things from these things, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use. Prepare to every good work. Flee also useful lust and follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, and them that call on the name of the Lord. Get yourself a good spiritual mentor, Amen. young people, and follow them. Yeah, Rebecca and Bob, they teach the youth, and Jennifer, but they can't do it alone. Amen. All of us have a, a part in this bringing up the next generation. How many of y'all want to see me up here at 80 years old preaching yet? Mm -hmm. It can happen. Brother Tom Hansen just turned 70. He's going to the Dominican Republic. Yeah. With his whole life to go plant the church there, and now God's calling him to go do it. So we have no excuse even if we're older, right? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh I better stop not going to that too far 23 verse 23 but foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strifes someone comes after you with some nonsense questions avoid it I'm not going to answer that they're not looking for an answer they're just looking to debate and the servant of the Lord verse 24 must not strive but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. And makes this instructing those that oppose themselves. Sometimes we don't know we're our own worst enemy. We don't realize we're opposing ourselves. Who are we opposing ourselves against, God Almighty? And once I heard a preacher say, you can't fight God, your arm's too short. You're wearing yourself out. <laughs> can't fight yourself either. Hard to do, right? But we do. Spiritually, box ourselves. If God peradventure, 
will give them repentance and acknowledging the truth that when they may recover themselves of the snare of the devil who are taken captive at his will. John chapter 3. Actually, uh, 1 Peter. We'll go to 1 Peter, sorry. 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm living proof. Any, if I can do this, anybody can do this. I could totally mess up my notes today. <laughs> There's hope for you guys. First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. If that phone is for me, tell them I'm busy. <laughs> for as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ. Everybody say, precious blood of Christ. As a lamb without blemish, without, without blemish, without spot, who was verily foreordained for the foundation of the world, was made manifest these last times for you. Everybody say, for me. for me. He did it for me. Who else would do that? What other God out there can you name that did that? Right, Pastor Lee? I don't know any other God. Even God says it in Isaiah. Look around. See if you see another Savior. I don't see any. I don't know any. I alone can save, he said. Seeing you purified your souls, verse 22, and obeying through the spirit, obeying the truth through the spirit to unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. If anything we lack, we, we don't love with a pure heart fervently. We could do better at that. I could do better at that. Brother Shaq said, it well, get to know your brothers and sisters, get to know what, get that discernment, get to know what they're, where they're hurting, and pray for them, love them. Take the time to minister to those needs. Because if it don't start in the church, you're not going to be able to do it out there. Verse 23, being born again, we're going to talk about that a little bit more, not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever and ever. See, the most important thing was the word of God that he sent them out there with. Yeah, there's power. Yes, there's healing. There's gifts of the spirit available for us. And yeah, that's going to draw people. But if you don't have your doctrine right, Amen. you're not going to be able to teach them the right things. And they're just going to become a wet, wet baby, half a Christian. Verse 24, for all flesh is grass. Everybody say, all flesh is grass. And the glory of man is the flower of the grass. Say the flower of the grass. And the grass withereth and the flower fadeth away, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. Everybody say the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So let's talk about this being born again, this harvest, if you will. John chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. There's a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that our teacher from God, for no man could do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. We see the power. We notice. We're taking notice. Nobody can do these things except God be with him. Amen. And Jesus said unto him, instead of giving glory to himself, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, unto thee, except the man be born again, he can't not see the kingdom of God. Now, did he ask him a question about being a born again? He was, he was out there saying, hey, we know that you're from God. But he answered the heart. He said, you need to be born again. Amen. Yeah, right, cut right to the matter. A lot of people will go back and get baptized, but they will really never really seek out and be converted with their whole heart. So when that, sta that staying power won't be there over time. You see them every once in a while, but they're not really fully committed. It's a matter of the heart, folks. And Nicodemus, verse 4, four, saith unto him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Now he's asking the right questions. Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? It doesn't make any sense to me. Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water, everybody say water, water. and of the spirit, and they say spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Sorry, no pass, no hall pass. No, you can't come here. Hard stop. Mm -mm. You're not born again. You can't get there. That's from Jesus. 
That's not my gospel. That's not my doctrine. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. And the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell when it cometh and where it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. People out there just can't figure out. They don't know where they're coming or going. But when you're born in the Spirit, God knows, because he's directing you. He's telling you exactly where to go, what to do, what to say, who to minister to, who to feed, who to heal. Let's go to an example of born again. So I'll be quiet in here. Let's keep moving. Acts chapter 8. Beginning in verse 26, we'll go to 40. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, God uses angels? Oh, yeah, he does. Saying, Arise and go down toward the south, which is the way that go down to Jerusalem, by Gaza, which is desert. And he rose and went, and behold, a man of the Ethiopia, a, great, a eunuch of great authority under Cadence, the queen of the Ethiopians, pretty powerful man, had the charge of all her treasure, came down to Jerusalem for to worship. He was returning, sitting on his chariot, read as Isaiah the prophet. And the spirit of the Lord, now it's not an angel, now it's the spirit himself saying, Go near and join yourself to this chariot. If you're in tune with God, if you're sanctifying the Lord in your heart like Pastor Andy preached a lot about last week, you're going to be listening to the Spirit, and he's going to say, go talk to this person over here. Go sit next to this person over here. Go listen to this person over here. And they came under a certain... He was reading the scriptures, and he said, I pray of thee, the eunuch says to Philip, saying, I pray of thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man? Because he's talking about the scripture. Verse 33, I'll go back up a little bit. This is important. And he answered, it, and he answered and said unto him, Except some man should guide me, verse 31, and he answered, Desired Philip to come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture we read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, like a lamb before a shearer opened out his mouth. And his humiliation and his judgment was taken away. Who should declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. He's talking about Jesus, right? And the, and the eunuch answered Philip saying, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began in the same scripture and preached unto him the world events of the day. About how great his football team is? Preached unto him Jesus. Back here, we happen to have, as Brother Kevin wisely said, some good old city water pumped into this tank back here. So everybody stand up with me for a second and look back here at this tank. And say, look. Look. Everybody say, look. look. Here is water. What's stopping you from being baptized? Right. Nothing. And what was the response? If thou believest, thou mayest. And he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And that's all it took. It didn't take 10 Bible studies. You didn't have to do it at the perfect time of the month. You didn't have to do it at, at a certain location. Here's water. Get back down, thanks. <laughs> Thank you for participating. I didn't want to lose you. Somebody looked like you're dozing off a little bit. <laughs> it's good to move around a little bit sometimes. That's all it takes. You don't have to know 100 scriptures. Just start right there and preach to him, Jesus, right where they're at in life. He didn't have the New Testament. What he did is had the testimony of Jesus Christ, though, and what God did in his life. Amen. And he was just going wherever God told him to go. Just go here, go there, go in the hospital room, share with them nurses. Go wherever you need to go, but go where I send you. And yes, you're going to need to suffer right now. You're in a season of suffering. I suffered. You're no little better than me. They do this to a, a green tree. What are they going to do to a dry one? Dry one. So yes, you're going to suffer. And that's okay. You're in good company. Because the Lord suffered himself. 
for all of us. For all of us. If thou believest, Philip said, with all thine heart thou madest. If you believe with all your heart, you're made. You got to seek after the Lord with all your heart at the point of conversion. Otherwise, you can get baptized as many times as you want. It ain't going to do you no good. Just getting wet. You better believe that Jesus died on that cross for you. You better believe that he rose again for you. Or it ain't going to do any good to follow that commandment. Let's skip to the closing verse. As uh, those who's getting ready to close us up gets ready to come up. John chapter 4, verses 34 to 38. And Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. In verse 35, say, ye not, say not ye, therefore there are four months until the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look to the fields, for they are white, are ready to harvest. And he that reapeth, receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that, he may, may, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth, another reapeth. I sent you to reap, wherein you bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and you are entered into their labors. We are now reaping in this church the benefit of others who worked and labored many years. Are we going to let that run out? Are we going to let that die with us? We're going to keep doing the work so that the next generation can come up and take this mic and start preaching. Can start playing that horn. Can start playing that guitar. Can start visiting people when they need to be visited. Amen. Shaquan Barkley was, sit was mic'd and was sitting on the fence recently during the game. He almost got his record for his personal running record. He plays for the Philadelphia Eagles. And the coach came down and sat next to him. And he said, I could put you back out there. You'll no doubt get your personal record of running for this day. And he said, no, I want to see them boys eat. I want to see young men eat. Yes, sir. And he said, let them go out and play. And as we're teaching and mentors, mentoring people, we got to let them eat. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. We got to let them get a chance to share, to pray, to do the will of God. Because if we keep holding on to it ourselves, we're eventually going to go by the grave because the walk that we're going to we're going to fade. We're going to pass away. So we got to get ready for the next generation. Let them young men and women eat. Let them have their time too, but train them. Mentor them. Teach them. Spend time with them. Or are we just going to reminisce on the things of the past? We got to keep our eyes on the prize. Forgetting those things which are behind. Yeah, you did a lot of great work, and we're rejoicing with you. God bless you. But there's more work to do now. We're not done. God's not done with you, and He's not done with me. Amen. God bless you. Give the Lord praise.